Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Stray. This is the cat game. It's published by Annapurna and is developed by Blue 12 Studio. Now, like I introduced it as the cat game because that's kind of a big thing it had going for it. We've never really seen an adventure quite like this one. When they announced it, it was pretty exciting and it just looked cool and unique. You, the player, are a cat navigating around a sort of dystopian cyberpunk robot future. It just seems like a recipe for success, right? Well, uh, this is actually a super simple and short adventure. One that left me feeling a little bit empty in spots, but I still think it's worth experiencing. There's some real good magic to this one, you know? But I say that only if you're into this type of thing, this type of game that I'll be describing in this video. You know, Stray may not necessarily change the world or anything, but it might be the game that some of us needed. Now it's available on PC through Steam and on PS4, and I've been playing a review copy on PS5. And just so you know, this footage is spoiler free. There are two main areas, and the second one, I'm not really gonna show much because it's worth experiencing if you play it. Now, story-wise, just the setup, the beginning really, you play as this stray cat who gets separated from their little pack of cat friends and finds themselves in this strange and mysterious futuristic underground city devoid of any actual living people. Like there's something afoul with the city, but on the bright side, it is inhabited by friendly, cool robots. Now, early on, you meet up with a little friendly robot drone that nests into your little like jacket that you have, and that robot helps you interface and connect with the world. Now, what Stray really is, is essentially like a fairly linear exploration puzzle solving adventure with an occasional change up in the action and gameplay elements. Now you explore open-ish city environments, looking for clues and specific little pieces to certain puzzles, but you're a cat, so there's a bit more to it than that. Your cat can walk, sprint, jump at context sensitive points, uh, pretty good heights actually, pick up stuff with its mouth, scratch at stuff, and even meow on command. Like there's actually a meow button, it's cool. Like meows will often perk up NPCs or get their attention. And sometimes as a cat, you just need to be annoying and knock stuff over with your paw or break something to accomplish your goals. And the game does do a really good job at the whole cat thing, you know, from the charm and cutesiness of it and the ability to do certain cat things, yeah. But where it really shines is when it makes you feel like a small, nimble creature in a much larger world. The town areas and the environments aren't usually necessarily massive, but the way the game uses the camera to emphasize size is great. Like when you're walking street level, the majority of the camera is more focused on what is above you, you know, like a little cat on the ground looking up. You're probably so used to seeing bars over like a, a doorway or bars over a window that you just assume you can't walk through it until you realize, oh, well, yeah, you're a cat. You don't even have to squeeze through it. You can walk right through underneath fences and all the time the camera will shrink down and follow you as your little cat squeezes through certain places. And the camera the camera really only frees up when you get up high. You know, the verticality and intricacy of some of the areas is really, really fun. To have your cat very realistically animated, I might add, uh, like wind up and jump up to a high ledge and you work your way up a fire escape up to the rooftops, that's where it's the most fun, figuring out how to get around. It's really, really simple though, keep in mind, like you're, you're basically clicking a button, but it's still satisfying because the cat moves swiftly, makes noises, and generally it's just fun to exist in its shoes or paws, I don't know. The environments themselves are really well designed and intricate to really warrant poking around everywhere. Like even if there's not a ton of stuff to collect. In one area, you're collecting certain things for a robot and throughout the game, you're collecting little memory bits for your drone friend. Not much, but even if you explore a hidden corner and come up empty, at least you hopped up somewhere as a cat and knocked over some bottles and it was funny. Sometimes simplicity is good. And I mean it when I say this game is simple. Like this is not Uncharted 3 or like Grand Theft Auto, but with a cat. It's more like Inside or Limbo, but a little bit more open. Now, similar to those types of experience games, I also finished it in four and a half hours. That was with me taking my sweet time and really exploring every nook and cranny, and not always just sprinting through every area. Now, note, it's not a full price game, so the price does reflect that, but everyone feels a little bit differently about cost per hour gameplay. Like, dude, I know some people that want to spend $8 and play a game for 400 hours, so hey. Uh, there's a good and a bad to its length. On the one hand, it's expertly paced. Like, every moment in the game feels refreshing and 
and new. Nothing gets really old or tired, nothing gets repetitive, nothing really feels too reused. You know, a game mechanic or a specific ability or something like that is introduced, it's used well for one scene, and then it's dropped in favor of the next thing in the game, keeping things always pretty fresh. You know, I was never bored. I was always in a new location or hunting for a new thing or using my drone in a different unique way or solving a different puzzle. There's really not a lot of repeat stuff and it's it's awesome. The game's adventure flows so well, at least it did for me. Now, unfortunately, upon finishing the game for me, it left me feeling a little bit empty, a little bit unfulfilled. You know, I don't need the game to be super long or anything, but it did feel like it ended a bit abruptly or it ended just as it was getting really good, you know? I wish it just had one more act in the middle to kind of develop the story a little bit more so it would have landed a bit better for me. The game raises interesting conversations about humanity and life, despite being all about robots, and this world is absolutely fascinating. I wish I could have gotten to know a character a bit longer or learned a bit more about the world and had maybe one or two more fun gameplay sequences to make it really feel like a perfect, well rounded journey. It's like something slightly was missing for me, but you know, of course, that's completely my personal opinion. It might just be me. And it's really my one issue with a game that, as far as I'm concerned, is pretty much all positives. This game does really have some fun magic to it. Like, even if the end of this journey, like, wasn't quite perfect, the rest of it was filled with charm and good vibes. I already talked about the cat's animations and the design of the cities, but the art behind the entire game really is something else. The robots that exist in this world are awesome and slightly cartoony. But the way their faces animate, the sounds they make, their unique clothing styles, the way they all look different, all of it is so cool. Seeing these underground cities and lit in neon with detailed storefronts and alleyways, it just makes you wanna check out every inch and slowly walk around. And seeing some of the darker, spookier, abandoned areas makes for like a lonelier and creepier game at certain points than you might expect. All of this is thanks to, like I said, great art design meshing with good graphics. Visually, the game was great for me. Although I was playing on PS5, now reports for the PC version so far are a bit mixed. So uh, for that, keep an eye on some experts and maybe wait for a patch. But with it looking good and running well, the icing on the cake is really the music and the sound design. The music hits just right. You know, it, it covers a few different genres, but with a nice sci-fi sound and with some good atmospheric sound and like the pitter patter of the cat's paws on a tin roof, it's just a great thing to play with headphones. It's a chill out game, like straight up. There aren't really any challenging spots. Uh, there's only a few ways you can technically fail. You can, if you're good, probably just get through the game only game overing once or twice. You know, it ain't Dark Souls. It's more of a chill experience. You know, hang out, turn the lights off, get immersed in this world, light a candle, partake in some other things. I don't know, whatever you like to do to relax. It's really just a matter of whether or not you like cats and vague stories and a shorter adventure. Personally, despite that one big caveat I mentioned, I was really into this and I do recommend checking it out. Considering it's not too expensive or if you can get access to it, it's available on some of those new PlayStation Plus tiers. You can check it out there. And the fact that it isn't that long, it's like a pretty low risk investment, I guess. And there's not a lot of games like this, so for that, I vote yes. But that's a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And now I want to hear yours down in the comments. Let me know what you think about Stray. Let me know what you think about cats in general. I love them, but I don't trust them. Let's talk about anything with this game down in the comments. And of course, if you want to hit me up directly, be sure to check out my other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jake Baldino, linked in the description, where I go a little bit more in depth on some games. But if you like this video, all you got to do is click the like button. It legit helps us. Thank you. Thanks for being here for these before you buys. Thank you for watching them and uh, we'll see you guys next time.